Hello guys, welcome back to Patrick TV GH. This is your savings that Mr. Patrick Banabankwa coming your way with another edition on this channel. Today we are going to talk about retirement planning, pension. All you need to know about retirement planning and uh, having with us today for the discussion is an established uh, corporate pension trustee in um, the form of Pensions Alliance Trust. Actually, they are our partners now. We are going to have a deeper understanding of what we call pension and how we can plan towards our retirement. They are going to talk to us about all their products and how it can benefit you and I. I'll be right back after the commercial break from our sponsors, Pensions Alliance Trust, Adam City Estate, and BBH Microcredit. Have you heard about Pensure? Pensure is a hospitalization benefit, disability and life insurance benefits package underwritten by Allianz Life Insurance for Pensions Alliance Trust or PAT. As a contributor to PAT, you get to enjoy Pensure for free as your contribution accumulates under the Tier 3 and Inundasu Wealth Builder Pension Scheme. This hospitalization benefit, disability and life insurance cover enhances your family's financial security. So what are you waiting for? Join Pensions Alliance Trust today and enjoy these free benefits too. Pension, your financial security enhanced. To sign up, call us on 0302-775-349 or 0501-553-839. Email us at clientservice at pensionsalliancetrust.com or use the web portal on our website www.pensionsalliancetrust.com Alternatively, you can reach us on any of our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Pensions Alliance Trust is available on your phone through the PAT app on both Android and iOS. Terms and conditions apply. Pensions Alliance Trust. Securing your future. Welcome back from the commercial break. As I said in the introduction, today we are going to look at retirement planning. And I'm blessed, as I said in the introduction, to have with me a lovely lady. The name is Nelly Esmi Asma. Mm -hmm. I hope I got the name right. Exactly, <laughs> that's the name. She's an investment analyst. She holds MSc Financial Risk Management and BA Economics and Statistics. So it means we have the right person for today's <laughs> discussion. Then on my right is Mr. Means slow sacrifice. Is that right? He is the head of operations and investment strategies at Pensions Alliance Trust. I look at his qualification and I'm really scared. Uh, he had his first degree in pharmacy. Uh, so, how is a pharmacist working with a pensions house? <laughs> and he's a CFA charter holder and MBA in banking and finance. Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to Patrick TVGH. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who should I start with? First of all, okay, what is. Um, P80, that's Pensions Alliance Trust. When someone is watching the show for the very first time and hears the name Pensions Alliance Trust, what is Pension Alliance Trust? So, uh, Pensions Alliance Trust is uh, a pensions trustee company uh, that uh, manages uh, pensions on behalf of uh, contributors. Okay. And uh, 
this came about because uh, there were changes in the pensions law and all that. So uh, currently, the trustee is the one who sits at the top okay. and manages the the whole ecosystem. Okay. There are fund managers who take the investment decisions. There's a custodian who is supposed to look after the investments for the contributors. Okay. And then we have the regulator too. That's uh, NPRA, National Pensions Regulatory Authority. Okay. So it's a, a very tight ecosystem and we sort of sit at the top. At the top. Okay. With the regulator sitting on top of us. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we are in a market with other competitors. Yeah. Yes, it's a it's a very competitive market okay. uh, because uh, you know pensions are long term and yeah. contributors uh, do their contributions over a very long time. So uh, if you manage to get them early, they stay on for a very long time. So it's very competitive and you don't normally see contributors moving from one trustee to the other. But uh, the only reason they would do that is uh, when they know you are providing better service. Okay. And that is what we normally do. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so on Patrick TV, one of the things we talk about, apart from savings investment, is retirement planning. And so when we have someone like this or a company like this that is a market leader in the pensions field, we are so much happy. And for that matter, I want to just take your thoughts. Let me start with Nelly. Why should people plan towards their retirement? Is it necessary? Yes, it's very important to plan towards your retirement. No, most often than not, we are used to um, working for a long period, and we don't. We have savings in our bank accounts, and you know, sometimes you have situations where a crisis comes in, and you have to fall to the savings you have in your account. But for the pensions, the advice, the advantage of it is that it's. The, per the law, you are not allowed to have access to it till you go on retirement. Okay. So, in case of any eventuality, you do not have to fall back to your pension funds. So, you get to save a lot towards your retirement. And it's very important. It helps us to get security at the end of um, your working years. You get security. You are able to relax and enjoy your pension because at least you know that you have some funds somewhere that when you are not actively in service, you can fall back to. Okay, so in a part of the world, when we talk of pension, what comes into our mind is I'm going on retirement at a 60. Apart from going on retirement at a 60, is there any other way someone can go on early retirement? Some courses? Um, yes, please. Um, the, we have the voluntary retirement that is from age 55. Okay. And you can also go on retirement due to if you have any medical incapacitation, maybe because of any illness, the doctor advises that you have to stop working. So we have individuals that, yes, they may have planned that 60 is my retirement age, but you do not know what will happen within the years of service. So there are some who have medical conditions that don't allow them to work till 50. So in those situations, you can have access to your, your pension. You can go on early retirement, that's it. And let's not forget death. Yeah. It can come at any point in time. Yes. So... Looking at straight to the 60, not everyone gets there. So there are other things that can cut short your retirement age. Yes. Okay, so um, I mean, those in the former sector, the, the discussion of pension is, is, is a normal thing for them. But the others who are not in the former sector, they don't work in, let's say, the bank, the insurance company, they are not teachers. And for them, when you talk of, I mean, pension, it, it seems very far from them and they don't even know how to get there. And I believe that that is where you come in. So do you have any specific products for the one watching who is a, a driver? Is there anything like that for them when it comes to the same pension we are talking about? Because we all know the SNIT, which is purposely towards the former set. I know there's the informal part, which is not too active. Yes, uh, fortunately, we have a diversified list of uh, products. Product, okay. And... Uh, for those in the informal sector, that's uh, one of the reasons why the pension law was changed. Okay. Because the one in the past, it was only benefiting those who were in formal employment. So okay. if you were a driver or, I mean, the same stress, you work, you get old, you can't work again, and then that's it. You, we expect your children to take care of you. 
Okay. But what the new pension law is doing is giving access to the informal sector. So uh, we have uh, a pension pool that's specifically for the informal sector. We call it industry. Okay. And in that one, uh, you get all the benefits the new pension law is bringing. And then you get the added service that you are getting professionals to manage the money for you. I mean, if I'm a spare part dealer in Apostle Kai, I get money at the end of the day. I mean, sometimes they do their own susu, they put it in the bank. But this one, you have a system where there's a bit of regulation in there, so you can keep your money and then uh, you can sleep at night. And uh, that is something we offer here. Okay, not to cut you, what is the practicality of the process for the man at Abuso, for this particular Edidaso uh, package that you mentioned? Let's look at the practicality of it. Okay, it's, it's very easy to get in. And uh, we knew the challenges with uh, the informal sector. I mean, if I'm in Abuso Kai and I sell, I'll be holding cash. And I wouldn't be able to leave my shop and go and pay the money in the bank or come all the way to our offices to pay. So we have satellite offices, not permanent. So we have people who go directly to the people in the informal sector to collect the money, lodge it into an account, and then the monies are invested. Okay. So we, we sort of take the service to them okay. rather than they come into, coming to yeah. yes and it's because we understand their work it's you don't have it like the formal sector where you you have break time you have work start times and then you have closing time for them oh, you work oh, so they, provided the the customers are coming you have to okay. stay on and we didn't want the product to interfere with their business so okay. we get a right to them and then we also have, you know, now there are a lot of payment channels. There's mobile money and all that. So all those options are open. So if you have money on your wallet, you want to make payments, you just uh, type in short codes and then you get it across. So uh, as I said, Inidasu has been tailored to them okay. specifically. Okay. So they don't have to go through the house. And I, I hope when you go to them, you don't go with big, big grammar. You don't go and be oh, speaking no. the jargons. Because these are people who want the everyday English. Okay. Oh, yes. yes. And sometimes mm -hmm. the local language. How, how do you guys manage it? Because ask me, Nelly, the name alone, <laughs> you to Please, someone. My name, I'm a fancy. Okay. So it's easy for... We are, we are, the names are just, you know, the British thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, we fancies, we like to. But then... We, we are field agents are very um, eloquent when it comes to English, G, there are some people that, so they can easily relate to the people. And one advantage of the NIDASO is that um, the contributions that come in are split into two. Okay. So we have a savings portion for the person and then a retirement portion. Okay. So assuming if you contribute 100 CDs a month, 50, um, 50 CDs will be put in the savings. And then um, another 50 will be put in the retirement portion. So for a spare parts dealer in um, Abosokai, in case you have maybe an issue and you want some money to fall back on, with any that's so well built that you have to put like the option of coming for your savings part. Okay. You can come for the savings part to plow back into your business and continue contributing. And we have then a retirement aspect it's just like the the one for formal sector workers where you cannot have access to it. So that is restricted. But the savings portions, at least they have an option, just like the susu they've been doing. Yes, it's, it's somewhat of a regulated. And that one, you don't get a case where somebody will run away with your money because mm. we are re like but, regulated. But, but the savings part, is there any deduction? You know, people complain that they want to take your money to the bank. By the time I realize this, every month there's a deduction on that amount. No. The 50 percent that you're talking about for the informal sector, any deduction? We are not giving you deductions. We are giving you interest. interest. That's the advantage of saving with us. So there's no deduction. 
It's rather interest that you are getting on it. I'm asking that, and I want to repeat again. You <laughs> see, you can give a person an interest of 10 CDs yes. on the amount, and deduct 5 CDs. The person will still see an interest, but they say the deduction. I want no, my what? viewers to be <laughs> sure that there will not be any deduction, so that after the show, I will not be chased out. <laughs> yes, so okay. uh, let, me, let me just come in. As you were asking, uh, for investments accounts, you don't normally get deductions. You get good. Okay. And we manage the investment accounts such that the expenses on in running the accounts are so low that we make room for good. Okay. So uh, transaction fees and all that are kept very low. And uh, the regulator has limits to how much can even be charged on the okay. cash. Okay. So that creates the opportunity for the investment to grow. Okay. So that you, you reduce the cost on it and then you get more returns associated with it. Okay. Okay. So I think we've to a large extent displayed more on the informal sector, which is the industry. So what about the, those in the formal sector or other parts that also want to have an investment with you or come into the pension space that you're running? What other product do you have? I don't know. But I want to start. Okay, let me <coughs> start with even the informal sector okay. and the private pensions. So, okay. for those in the formal sector, you know there's a limit to how much you can contribute. Okay. Because there's a, a tax advantage and all that. Okay. Yeah. The informal pension allows you to, when you max out on that formal, you can also extend the pension. So. The informal is normally for the informal. informal yes. Okay. If you are formal and you've taken all the deductions that can be taken for your pension, you can still stretch it to okay. the informal. Okay. Yes. When it comes to the formal, I mean, you know, in the past it was just the formal. So that area is well developed okay. because snakes used to run it for so many years. Right. Currently, what uh, was done? when the new law came was to increase the contributions a bit. Okay. And it was done because uh, it was realized that uh, the monies people were taking home when they retired, retire wasn't even getting them home. Okay. So the government came in with that. And when you even look at the pension space globally, we, we retire earlier than a lot of other countries. Okay. When you go to Europe and the Americas and all that, they they are even paid better than us, but they work longer. In our case, when the new pension law came, we realized that no, we need to tailor the product to fit the law. So we have product for tier two, which is I don't know if I should just mention that. Yeah, you, 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 okay, so good. the new law brought in uh, the tier system. In the past, it was just snakes that was. You pay to SNIT, SNIT will manage it, you go on retirement, they will do their calculation, give you your money. If it's enough, you are lucky. If it's not enough, then. So when the new law came, we had this tier system where we had tier one, which was still managed by SNIT. Okay. There was a tier two, which a private fund manager was supposed to manage. And okay. then there was a tier three, which was more of the optional one. So. If you max out on your tier two and you still want to do tier three, which was voluntary, then you can do that. So for us, we have tier two products, which are mainly occupational products. So we have uh, master tier two that uh, we sort of pull all tier two contributions together into a master scheme where we invest in bulk. And you know when you are investing and you have a huge base, you can command better rates, the fees are lower. So that is the advantage that Master Tier 2 has. And then we also have a Master Tier 3, which is all the voluntary ones put together. Okay. So if you have done your Tier 1 and Tier 2, which is mandatory anyway by law, and you still want to do Tier 3, you bring in your 100 CDs, she brings in her 200. What we do is we create a master trust scheme. We pull all those monies together and then we invest them. That way, even though your money is just 100 CDs, it will still have the same command as 
a full weight, 100 million. Okay. So that is the other product that we have also created. Okay. And we have a third product that we call Pen Adopt. Okay. So let's take it that name again. Pen Adopt. So pen Adopt. Okay. Expansion and adoption, adoption okay. put together. So what that does is, let's say you have someone who cannot contribute, maybe a child, uh, an old relative, and you want to kickstart the contributions for them. What we do is we create an account where the account will be for them, but you will be funding. Okay. So it will be sort of extending that pension benefit to somebody who can't do it. And for a child, I mean, you set them off on the right footing. When they grow to a certain age and they start working, then they will also pick it up and continue. Okay. By which time you would have a lot of money in the account. Okay. And uh, let me just say that for us at PAT, we look at pensions as uh, someone who is sitting in an aircraft. So all your work life, you are in that comfort zone in the air. When you retire, it's when you are supposed to drop down. Okay. And for us, we provide that golden parachute that well, when you get on it, <laughs> you don't even land on your feet until your maker calls you. So we give okay. you that comfort okay. that in the past, immediately you retire, you get your parachute, it brings you down straight to air. But what we provide is something that would give you that comfort until you are ready to meet your okay. maker. Okay. okay. Is, that, is there any other products that uh, Pensions Alliance Trust give to Daniels? Okay, so as Winslow mentioned, we have the Tier 3. So under the Tier 3, we have there are two aspects to the Tier 3. There's an employer-sponsored aspect and then there's the private pensions as well. So for the employer-sponsored part, you know, there are some employers that would also like to support besides the tier one that they contribute to SNIT and the tier two, they want to contribute a bit more okay. for their employees. Okay. Now, you ask yourself, why would an employer want to do that? There are several advantages for the employer in doing so because you get for the, um, the tier, that aspect of the tier three, the employer-sponsored bit, that one is tax exempt. So you make the contribution payments before you pay your taxes. Okay. So you get you as an employer get to save some tax when you contribute to tier three or um, the additional pensions for your employees. Okay. Now for the personal pension, this you can do when after all the money has been deducted, your taxes and then your contrib your salaries hit your account. Now you want to contribute an extra to your pensions. Okay. So you as an individual, when the contribution, when your salary is paid, you want to contribute more. When you contribute more to that private pension, we have a product called Pension. Okay. Yes. So it is an embedded insurance bit for the for our contributors. So we offer um, death, hospitalization, and um, disability. Disability. Yes. So for our, um, employees that contribute to their private pensions, they have the advantage of being part of our pension. So at no cost, we pay your premiums to uh, um, an insurance company, that's Alliance Insurance, and you, they cover you for death, hospitalization, hospitalization and then and disability. disability. Okay. Yes. So that's an advantage of joining our okay. scheme, not other trustees do not do that though. Uh, you, see, you see the way I'm staring at it. <laughs> it looks too good to be true. Okay, so so Patrick, let me just explain what is happening here. Okay. Uh, what we decided to do is to try and encourage our contributors to put in more money for their retirement. Okay. So we looked at our portfolios and uh, we came up with a suggestion that okay if you manage to get your account to a certain level we would take out an insurance policy for you okay. which will be financed by us okay. so that we get more people to at least bring their contributions mm -hmm. to that level and 
it wouldn't adversely affect your contributions because no money will be taken from it to fund the insurance. We decided that, okay, let's go into our pocket and try to give some value back to our contributors. It's, it's hitting your, yes, your margin, not yes. the, yeah. the, the, the yeah. contributor. Yes. Okay. And we, we think that it would help at least if I am contributing for my retirement and I have death cover, the hospitalization and the disability, it's a win-win for me when I'm not even paying for that insurance. So that's the main idea behind that. And we did it for a tier three because that is where it's voluntary. You can increase, reduce your contribution for tier two. I mean, the rate is fixed. You can't do more than uh, the law allows. Okay. Okay, so viewers, I think um, we have enjoyed today's session. We've been talking about pension, retirement, savings, all put together. This is going to be part one of our engagement with Pensions Alliance Trust. We'll come in with next week with part two. Stay tuned. Before you leave, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel, Patrick TV GH. And follow us on all social media platforms at Patrick TVGH. We'll meet again next week.